All right. So um, I'm here to talk about VR, um, how big it's going to be, uh, and how critical it is that we can all create and participate in VR. Um, it shouldn't just be applications produced by the big companies that we consume, but we should be able to participate um, in the creation of and the sharing of, just like all other previous media types. So what is VR? Um, how many people here have actually tried VR? All right, quite a few. How many of you had a VR experience that you shared with other people in the VR experience and you had a social interaction with other people in VR? Very few, all right. That's when I think you start to have real VR, when you can interact with people and uh, have social interaction and do things together, um, just like we do in the physical world. Whether that's playing games, doing work, or what have you. Um, and to have those experiences, you obviously want to be able to control who you're meeting with, uh, who has access to that experience, and what types of interaction are you going to have? Is it school? Is it work? Um, I mean, humans pretty much create spaces like this one, or your school, or your home, your home theater, your park. Those are all human-created spaces. A particular group of people come together in those spaces and have some social interaction, like we're doing right here today. And that is going to be replicated at massive scale in VR. So VR is going to impact almost everything. So it's going to be huge. Uh, this year, uh, it's estimated to be a $2 billion industry by some, a billion by some, but you know, Goldman Sachs saying that in by 2025, it's going to be an $80 billion industry combined with AR. So it's going to be huge. And there's no major technology or media player today that's not severely investing in VR. Um, so the acceleration of the quality and the cost and all those things are just going to keep improving so that over the next several years it's going to be something that we can all participate in. And that's when it's going to be important that we're not just consumers, we're also participants. So we have a lot of experience at uh, Linden Lab that I run um, has been doing Second Life, the largest virtual world uh, to date. Um, Last year alone, creators of all kinds of experience in Second Life uh, redeemed $60 million. So a lot of people make their living creating content and experiences for other people. And we've seen a huge number of, of use cases from that. And VR is just going to take this to a, another level. Um, you have business meetings taking place. Um, I know a company that meets every month in Second Life to uh, there's like 20, 30 people. Um, and if they didn't have Second Life, they said they just would not meet because it would be too expensive to travel and doing that on a f conference call or something like that just doesn't work because in VR or in, in a virtual experience, you can participate, you can share media, and you can have dialogue, you can understand who is talking and who's saying what. And with VR, this is going to be just become super apparent. It's going to be like interacting in the physical world. You have health. Um, in Second Life, we've already seen people uh, helping people with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, um, treating people for all kinds of phobias. Um, and so there'll be both physical and, um, uh, and mental health uh, solutions in VR that's going to help a tremendous uh, amount for people. I, I have, uh, we have a, a user in Second Life, Fran. She's, she's in her upper 80s. She has Parkinson's. So if movement in the physical world is, is really complicated or difficult, and in Second Life, she can go dancing, she can go swimming, she can go flying, she goes hang out with friends. So it's an extremely social experience and very liberating for someone that can't necessarily move around in the physical space. It's going to impact businesses, how you buy and how you sell. This is how you're going to try out the next car. This is how you're going to try out your clothing and see how they fit. Um, this is how you're going to uh, go shopping for houses or, or apartments. So it's going to impact almost everything that, that you can buy and sell. Obviously, gaming uh, and playing 
uh, and just socializing, whether you just sit down to play chess with a friend from across the world or, um, or more, you know, we're, we're not so focused on gaming, but plenty of game studios are, are going to create a huge amount of interesting games. But um, in, in VR, you will be playing uh, and socializing a lot. And education. Uh, Second Life has over 500 institutions, uh, educational institutions that allow um, students to um, uh, learn all kinds of different subjects. You have Texas A&M, um, they teach chemistry in Second Life, and they found in a test that the virtual students actually outperformed the students using the traditional physical lab because of the way they can interact with information and understand information better. So it's going to be an extremely powerful medium for, for education. So how close are we? Well, this year you're starting to hear more and more news, obviously, that this hardware is starting to ship. Um, you have Oculus, you have HTC Vive, you have Sony PlayStation later this year, and then you have the mobile VR players like Samsung Gear VR in collaboration with Oculus. Um, and software, uh, mostly gaming studios today are producing a lot of games. Um, and because they have the skill set uh, from uh, game development in the past to sort of directly apply to how to create virtual experiences, um, which is why it's kind of centered around gaming for now. And you see Oculus and, and uh, HTC uh, in collaboration with Valve are focusing very much on trying to lock up the, the game developers for their platforms. But ultimately, it's going to spread to a lot more uh, types of experiences uh, beyond just gaming. So we're at the beginning, uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow quickly. Uh, the Oculus that came out at 600 bucks. Uh, people are like, wow, that's expensive. Well, uh, two years ago, Jeremy Balenson at Stanford Lab, who runs one of the, you know, he's been doing research in, in uh, VR for over 20 years, and he has one of the best VR labs in the world. He just traded his system, which was a $35,000 system, to the $600 system, and it's way, way better. So prices are coming down really, really fast. So uh, compared to just a few years ago, it's an extremely good deal. So, democratizing a medium. So we've seen this with other mediums, whether it's text, photos. This is just shows photos growth over, over time. Um, I can't see the, the right... Well, anyway, um, it just hit the hockey stick once you had mobile phones, you had sharing sites, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, and all that. And suddenly when all of us can actually produce and share and consume uh, each other's stuff, it just takes off like crazy. And the same thing will happen with VR once it becomes easy enough for us to create this type of content, which it's not yet. Uh, today, it's only in the hands of, of technology organizations to be able to produce immersive VR experiences. So we've been working on this thing called Project Sansar for a while. And um, it's going to make it possible for all of us to create and share VR. Um, the, it's, it's a platform that allows anyone to uh, sort of create and share, but most of us don't necessarily know how to create some of this content, just like we don't know how to create the content in the physical world. Uh, none of us probably built our own homes or apartments and the table you have dinner on or the plates you eat off of. Like you, we, we buy all this stuff, but then we customize it in, in a composition that makes it our home or our identity, uh, whatever it might be, without necessarily making all the clothing and, and, and the content. But making it easy for people to put together a, an experience and choose who can access that, who can come into your home, who can come into your classroom, and uh, what type of interactivity or experience are you going to have within that is, is going to be something that you're going to be able to uh, completely control and dictate. So where are we today? Uh, we've been working about uh, two and a half years. Uh, it's a very large investment. Uh, thankfully, Second Life is kicking off a lot of money for us, so we can uh, make this massive investment. We have over 75 people in R&D building this platform to make it possible for all of you to uh, create and share and socialize VR. So here's one example. 
We've worked, uh, so we, since August, we've been in the production environment with a very few small number of alpha creators. Um, one uh, group we've worked with is the Sorbonne University with Insight Digital uh, in collaboration with the Ministry of Antiquities in, of Egypt. They're doing this great work to capture these historical sites, many of which are, you know, being destroyed over time. And so they went in with laser scanners and taking tens of thousands of photos to capture some of these incredible, this is a tomb. And they came out with about a, a model of, with 50 million polygons. Um, they sent that to us. We uploaded it in Sansar, reduced it to 40,000 polygons so that you could have a performant experience. And now that is not just something you can look at, but it's something that you can walk into with other people and look at it and have a conversation about it. You can have a guide take you through this. And over time, with more interactivity, you can start to maybe point to parts of this and, and have user interface pop up and tell you the story of what, what these hieroglyphics and, and these paintings mean. Um, imagine what that's going to do for travel or education. Uh, and that's just one example. So here's how easy it ultimately for us it's going to be to create things in VR. Just using controllers, uh, in this case we HTC Vive controllers, but it works just as well with um, the uh, Oculus touch controllers that will ship this fall. You kind of just can manipulate the environment like you would in your home when you sort of remodel or refurnish your home. You just grab an object and he just puts it there. He wants to put that rock on top of that thing, he just places it there pick up this megaton structure. This is a fun little Mars scene that we're just playing around on. But this is how easy it can be. You don't necessarily need to know how to create all of these objects, because they're going to be on the marketplace where you can buy them, or they will be available for free. And then you just combine things, and then you publish it, and then you invite people into this environment and can have any type of social experience you want. And then with scripting, you can start to add more interactivity to make it uh, you know, behave in all kinds of interesting ways, whether you want that to be a game or some instructional type of thing. Here's kind of a screenshot of what that scene looks like after Jason uh, monkeyed around with it for a while. So here's some more uh, taste of what's possible. that was created with no engineer involved, basically just content creators creating content, uploading it, and now there were fully functional social experiences. And with that, uh, I'm announcing that uh, anyone can now apply at projectsansar.com to come and um, uh, sign up for a creator preview. We will open up later this summer. Um, so that all of you can start to create and share content. Um, our goal is to make this available uh, generally to everybody uh, by the end of this year. Um, and we're really excited about that. Um, so to conclude, VR will impact almost everything. Whether you're an individual who just wants to have fun, whether you're a brand that needs to interact with customers, whether you're uh, a product that needs to uh, train uh, employees on how to use uh, a process or a product. Um, so it's going to be or, a huge range of use cases. But today, unfortunately, only engineering organizations can create those experiences. But with Project Sansar, we're all going to be able to create them, share them, um, socialize within them, and monetize them. Uh, through the marketplace, you can put full experiences or, or assets that other people want to use in their experiences. And uh, a lot of people will be able to make money um, creating stuff in Sansar. So with that, I'd like to say thank you. And uh, 
enjoy seeing you in uh, VR in the future. Cheers.